Hello friends and welcome. I'm Sarah Liz and I am back with another Stepped Up Emergency Card Kit. This is actually Kit 26. This came out at the very beginning of March and then I got really busy with other videos. Like there just wasn't room in my schedule on YouTube. So we're getting to it now and I'm excited. This kit includes sentiments for St. Patrick's Day and Easter. And then we have this card sketch. So the focus today is really on stretching that card sketch and finding some fun fold ways to use it. If you're enjoying these stepped up video kits and the free printables, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified every time there's a new kit available. So for card number one, we're gonna make a joy fold. So this is an A2 card and it's side folding on the short side, that's really important. So I held my card base up to my printable, which prints the same size as an A2 card. And I just made little tick marks where that diagonal line is. And then I chopped it off in my trimmer. I'm gonna cover that in some really pale gray cardstock. And then I'm just gonna use my scissors and trim right along that diagonal cut on the card base to make this shorter. So a joyful card is like a card inside a card. And that's why we're chopping this short. I wanted to replicate that diagonal stripe that's on the card sketch. So I cut this strip using one of my scrapbook.com dies. I'll link everything I'm using below, but you can probably use stuff you already have to make something really similar. I added the glue onto that navy piece and then I'm kind of lining up that gray cardstock so that the scallops end at the same spot on both sides. I like that symmetry. Then I'll go ahead and glue the entire thing onto my card base because that will help me when I go to trim off the excess, right? Little wet glue helps me to wiggle everything in place and then I'll flip it over just to give myself a better visual, a little more contrast. And we have a card base that's pretty cute all on its own. You wouldn't need to make a joy fold. To get some help with color inspiration, I pulled one of my color cube cards. This is number 184 and I am gonna cut the rest of my pieces with those colors in mind. So this is the notched corner frames from Spellbinders and I'm gonna take a strip of navy cardstock. I'm gonna score it and fold it in half. And then when I go to cut this with my dies, I want to cut a card. So I'm gonna put the die right up against that fold, but not cutting through the fold. Okay, so now I have this fun little mini card. You could just cut this doubling up what's on the card sketch. So a nine by three inch and then score it and fold it in half. And that would work too. This just felt like fun. I wanted to step up the inside of my card as well. So I'm grabbing this gold foiled paper from Paper Rose Studio. You guys, that whole pack is so beautiful. Uh, and then I'm just kind of figuring out what everything's gonna look like. I'm gonna use some large alpha dies. These are the B Bold Alpha dies. I have the uppercase and the lowercase. I love the size of them. I love that they're sort of square. And so it's really easy to get them lined up straight. I'm creating a drop shadow with my die cut letters. And so I'm gluing these all sort of down and to the right, just a little bit. And I've grabbed cardstock that matches my color cube card. So that deep, deep purple is Plum from Spellbinders. And then the pinky purple is Plum Punch from Tailored Expressions. The top layer is a shimmer white cardstock from Michaels. So I am going to go ahead and add this pattern paper on the inside. I've cut it down to four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I trimmed just a tiny extra sliver off the left hand side to make sure that it's gonna fit in the card and it's gonna close well. Then I have my little mini card and I'm gonna rotate that. So the two cards open in opposite directions. I'm just double checking, making sure everything fits. And then I'm gonna go ahead and glue that centered on the inside of my card. If you are a craft roulette fan, a joy fold ends up on that project list from time to time and it's really easy. You wouldn't have to do the diagonal cut. You don't have to use dies to create that mini card. And it's super fun and a little surprising. I'm gluing a smaller version of that notched corner frame on the inside so I have a nice white space to write my message. And then on the front, I'm gonna go rogue. So I originally cut this pink piece. I think it's Bubble Bath from Stampin' Up. So it's a ever so slightly purpley pink, very pale pink. 
and it just didn't let the letters pop enough. There wasn't enough contrast. So instead I grabbed this pale blue that is mystery cardstock from my stash and I'm gonna go over the whole thing with my shimmer pen from scrapbook.com. These things come in a three pack and I love that because otherwise that shimmer pen sits in my little caddy and I don't use it because I'm afraid of using it up. Do you guys do this? Like what are you hoarding in your stash? That HBD for happy birthday just barely fits inside this frame. Um, I checked it before I did all the drop shadows. And so when I finally went to glue things down and I was like, uh oh, uh oh, <laughs> but we're okay. It's going to work. Then I did the H and the D first, and I'm just bringing in a ruler to try to make sure that the bottoms are aligned. And then that way I can center that B right in the middle. And that will help me with spacing. If I was using more letters, I would line things up on my grid mat and I would pick them up with my clear sticky mat like I do with die cuts all the time. I'll probably do it at some point in this video. Um, so that's an option for you as well. I wanted to add an additional sentiment as well. And so this came out, I think in December, it is the happy birthday sub sentiments mini kit. I will link to that video below if you're interested in this free download too. And I have just trimmed out a bunch of them and I keep them in a little pocket. So I am gonna add that onto a 3 8 inch strip of navy cardstock that matches our mini card. And then I'm gonna to try to figure out where to put it. At first I thought I was gonna add it to the front of the card and we were gonna leave this like really clean and simple. But in the end, I like it better on the inside, right here on this flap. I think it's super fun, it's completely covered by our mini card and so you open it up and you keep getting like more surprises and I really enjoyed that. I cut a boatload of these florals for a card from maybe last week and so I'm gonna start using them up. You're gonna see them in a bunch of videos coming up. This is the Be Bold Blooms from Spellbinders. It's been out for a long time um, and if you keep an eye out, these will go on super sale through Spellbinders. I caught them on super sale and I got two sets so I can cut a ton of them super, super quickly. I added a little bit of foam to the left hand side because there's a lot of dimension from those die cut letters. Um, and then <laughs> I flipped it over and found out that maybe I had over adhesed again. And I'll just remove one of those and sort of tuck the rest of them underneath. On this side, I have to be particularly careful. I need to make sure that that flower where I'm adding my foam isn't going to cross the edge of that card. Otherwise it won't open, right? So I'm double checking, everything moves right. And that's it, my friends. This is a pretty quick and easy card that has a ton of surprise and shine and sparkle. And I love it. This next card is a little simpler. Uh, but still a lot of fun and has some of that surprise to it. So I am starting once again with a top folding A2 card base. And then I have some white shimmer cardstock, some blue cardstock, and then I have this banner. I cut this from the scrapbook.com banner set. There are a ton of them and the biggest one is absolutely massive. You wouldn't need to use a banner here. You can use any die cut shape. Actually in the third card, we're going to use a different die cut shape. Because the banner has a sharp angle at the bottom, I am lining it up on that left-hand edge of my card and I'm replicating that angle on my card base. We're gonna chop this one off too and I wanted those angles to match. But again, you could use a different shape and it wouldn't matter. Did it matter for the banner? I'm not sure it did, but it felt right, so we went with it. I eyeballed that, but you could once again lay that over top of your printable and have it match if that's something you're more comfortable with. I'm using some removable adhesive to line this up on the front of my card. And once again, I'll just grab my scissors and trim that off. You could take that to your trimmer if you're more comfortable that way. You could even sort of hold it there and use a pencil to make a line and then take it to your trimmer. You got options, my friends. I wanted some extra detail on the background, like the inside of the card and on that blue card stock. So this is the abstract scratch background from Trinity Stamps. It's one of my very favorite background stamps. And then I'm gonna, apologies now, there's some weird editing in here. I got a new camera and it has some autofocus features that are a little weird. 
Um, so I edited out the part where like the whole thing shifted. I'm just stamping. And what I wanted to show you is that on my sticky mat, there's an A2 layer that it marks out. And I put both layers, one's for the inside of my card and one is that blue layer, both in that little rectangle on my sticky mat. And so that way I will get a continuous pattern across those two pieces. We're covering up enough. I don't know that anyone but me will know, but now you know, and you can examine my card very closely uh, and be impressed. So that's exciting. So once again, I have my slimline strips and then I have these scallop strips and I'm trying to decide what color I want and do I want a scallop. That pattern can read masculine. And so for a while I thought I was gonna make a masculine card, but really this one kind of does both. We're doing the same sort of thing as last time, but without the scallop, I like this thicker strip so I can just glue right onto it. And I added the glue onto the diagonal cut of that blue piece because then it's easier for me to see if the purple hanging out of the bottom is even. Then I'm gonna add glue all over my short flap of my card and I'm gonna add that right on top. So far, this is pretty much the same as card number one. It's just that we're not gonna add the mini card. It's worth noting, you wouldn't need to cut that front flap. You actually could build all of this on just a standard card base, right? Put that shimmer white cardstock down and then your blue piece and then a purple strip and then your banner on top and you are good to go. But I wanted to make it fancy. <laughs> so I am holding this up and just centering it on my card and I'm using my fingers to remember where this was on the card and where I can put my glue. And then I will lay that down right on top. I really struggled with the colors on this card as well. So we're actually gonna switch that pattern paper on the banner later, but for now, we're gonna move on with our die decorations. This is the doodle car from Trinity Stamps and then the woodland animals from Karen Berniston. Karen Berniston has a ton of these little tiny animal critters and accessories, and I love them so, so much. And they fit beautifully in the Trinity doodle car. So we're gonna do that. This little guy is my favorite, and if you keep the die cut in the die, there's a stencil feature for his eyes and nose. So I did that first, and then I'll carefully remove him, and I can start adding the other pieces. He's pretty quick and easy. So he's got a tail, and then his little black mask, and a white belly. Um, if you were gonna see his feet, and maybe even his paws, I would take my marker and add some extra black details just so he's not all gray. But we're sticking him inside the car, so I don't really care about his feet. Then I'm gonna try to figure out what direction this little mask goes. It gets really obvious at some point, um, and I will add that on. The only tricky piece about this little raccoon is that his ears cut all the way through, so I'm just adding a little bit of tape. Mine's micropore tape, but any tape would work behind them. And then I'll add the insides of the ears back in there. We're gonna move on to the doodle car here in a second, but I wanna tell you about something really exciting happening on my channel next week. On Monday, April 1st, I will be hosting my very first live stream on my channel. For the past couple months, I've been live streaming with Lynn over at LV Handcrafted and our other crafty friends. On Monday, you guys, it's some of my very favorite creators, Lauren Taylor Made, Crafty Al, Carrie Rhodes, Cassie Trask, and Lynn from LV Handcrafted, and we're playing with the Spellbinders Club kits. We don't have a real plan. There's just gonna be hangouts and shenanigans. So I will link to that below and at the end of this video. You can click the notify me to be reminded when that is coming up. Otherwise, it's just 6 p.m. Central Time on Monday. I think that's 4 p.m. Pacific. So I'm adding my wheels to my doodle car. You guys, I love this car. It's just quirky and goofy. And like when you look at the tires, they're not perfectly round. And I love that about it. Um, it does mean you can either just kind of wiggle pieces until they fit. Or if you're a little type A like I am, I just look for like the little flat spots, right? Each round section has one piece that is flatter than the rest. And that makes it pretty easy to line them up and pop them into place very quickly. I am just adding on my little side mirror here and then we're gonna pop our raccoon in there. I felt like too much of him got covered up if he was all the way inside the car. So we're gonna hang him out and then you guys, his little hands 
are going to hang over the door. I love this so much. A lot of Karen Barniston's critters have hands that you can put things in. You could put almost anybody in that. I will leave a link below to just check out all her critters in a couple of places because you can get them all over from her website, scrapbook.com. Uh, I think Simon might carry some of them. I'll see what I can find. For our sentiment, I'm gonna use Emergency Kit 18. These are Thinking of You sentiments. And I've trimmed this so my tick marks touch both sides of the cardstock. And then I'll just line those tick marks up on the cutting edge of my trimmer and then I square it up. You wouldn't have to do that, but sometimes my printer doesn't print very straight um, and that just helps me make sure everything looks really good. So these are about a quarter inch and I'm gonna glue that onto a 3 8 inch strip of cardstock here and I will create an equal margin on the top and bottom and on the left and then that way I can just bring it to my trimmer and cut off little slivers until it matches everything else. Here's where I'm changing my mind about the banner. So I am grabbing this birthday cardstock pack from scrapbook.com. It's six by eight. I love that size. I trimmed that out and I love it more. Now it feels like a party. <laughs> uh, and that's the kind of card I wanna make every time a party. So I'm gonna glue that right on top and then I will add my car and then I'm gonna be like, wait a minute, I think we need more. The doodle car has two pieces for that main body and mine are kind of taped together just so I can handle it a little more easily. But it does mean when I'm adding glue to the top of the car, I'm making sure to add it to both pieces. And I avoided adding glue in the bottom left and right corners so I didn't glue my card shut. So I am adding in some balloons here. These are from an old large die of the month, I think from last May. I will link it below, it's still available. Um, but there's also some really great balloons in the birthday wreath add-on. They're a little bit bigger, or I probably would have grabbed that one because my space is a bit tight. But I love that birthday wreath add-on because it has so many other celebratory die cuts and they're really quick and easy to put together. So I'll link both. Um, and I have just added my little strings and then I'm gonna tuck those inside the back of the car. I thought for a minute about having my raccoon hold them but it was gonna cover up too much of him and this just felt a little bit more balanced. Anytime I'm adding glue onto something thin like those balloon strings, I add my dots of glue and I tap it off on the back of my hand. You could use scrap cardstock or just some printer paper. Uh, so I'm not gonna have glue sort of oozing out all over the place. My sentiment says sending smiles across the miles, which I love for my little doodle car. And I'm gonna add that with some removable adhesive in case I change my mind later. And that will finish up card number two. There's a little stamping on the inside, but it's a very light. You can write right over the top of it. And I just think it's a fun added detail. For card number three, we're gonna make a five by seven. You guys, I don't do this very often. And it's a top folding five by seven. This is 11 inches by five inches, and I'm scoring at four inches. We're essentially doing the same thing as the previous two cards. Uh, and it works really well here because a top folding five by seven is a rough task, right? I don't have paper big enough most of the time. I have this strip of green cardstock I knew I wanted to use. And so I'm using that as a guide when I create my angle that I'm gonna cut off. You wouldn't have to do that, but I couldn't be bothered to cut a bigger one. <laughs> so it was like, let's make sure it fits before we go chopping the card into pieces. As before, I'm adding some colored cardstock onto the top. Later on, I'm gonna to decide to stamp on that. It's gonna be a whole thing. I'm gonna mess it up. I'm gonna fix it. It's gonna be fine, everybody. It's gonna be fine. I brought that to my trimmer to clean it up this time. You can do it however you are most comfortable. I'm gonna add a little bit of glue just to the edge, that diagonal edge of my gray cardstock and I will line it up so that I have an equal amount of green showing all along and to make sure it's gonna fit all the way across. Then I can add this to the short flap of my card. This is super simple. You can do this, you can make it any size you want. You could do something kind of like this with a slim line or a mini slim line. That would be super fun too. I'm trimming off that green cardstock and then I'm also gonna add like a little black scallop and for a moment, I panicked. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm making a wicked card, but it's gonna be fine. It's not gonna feel like that <laughs> when we're done, but I was worried that maybe I was gonna have to like disassemble and reassemble, and this was card number three. 
Uh, this is the Winifred Colorize die, and I love that on the backs of the dies, it tells you what color to cut out from it. So it'll say white or black or gray one, gray two, gray three. And I think there was one that said pink. So the dies group together pieces that need to be cut out of the same color, and I just thought, it was so brilliant because it made it really quick and easy to die cut all the pieces. I will say I have sped up the zebra more than I normally do because there are more pieces than I thought there were gonna be. I was surprised at how easily it came together. I think there was only one thing I put down and thought I'd done it wrong. I hadn't, I hadn't, because there's also debossed detail on these to show you like where the other piece goes on top of it you could potentially skip some of those pieces as well. I don't know that you actually need all of these, um, but it's fun and I always like to put it together as it's designed the first time I do it. So I am just layering pieces up, a little wet glue, and again, I love that I can add them straight onto the big piece, right? Onto the zebra itself because I know from the deboss details where things go and I'm not trying to add tiny little dabs of glue onto a speck of a stripe. Like that's just not gonna happen in my world. I also have the packaging from this that has a clear picture of this die assembled in front of me, like right off camera. And then I'm putting it all together inside my craft stacks trays from Spellbinders. I've been doing this a lot lately. The lids to the trays still have a little bit of a well in them, just a tiny little bit. So I could stack up all the different dies on three trays so I know exactly where things are and where they go and it makes this process much, much easier. Um, the worst part to me is when I'm trying to remove something because I wasn't paying attention or I didn't plan. I just spent five minutes before I started gluing making sure I knew what went where and that made this so seamless. So I'm down to just a few more pieces to add on to my zebra and I was getting this far in and I was like proud of myself but I was noticing I had a lot of little hairs on my die cuts. You know what I'm talking about right? Sometimes you cut a piece and along the edge you get these little slivers, little hairs of extra cardstock hanging off there. Um, so what I did is I kind of set the whole thing aside to dry for a few minutes and then I have a stiff bristled brush. It's stiff because I let some Mod Podge dry <laughs> in the base of the brush. Don't judge me, uh, but it's great for this. So I take that brush and I just sort of rub it all over the die cut. You can see it there, that green handled brush, and it removes all of those little hairs. And I'm not trying to do it individually or to trying to sand pieces like that wasn't gonna happen three cards in. I wanted to make a little background for my zebra. So I'm using the largest oval from the Fluted Classics ovals and then a grass die cut from Pixie Dust. And I cut it from some acetate. This is not the grass, right? If I was gonna add a die cut to a card, this would have been the trash, but that is an excellent stencil for my grass. Then I can use the bottom part that cuts the actual grass and use it as a mask. I'm just adding it over top of my waffle flower grip mat and now I can add my clouds or blue ink and I don't need to worry about that affecting the grass at all. I love this puffy cloud stencil just because it's so big and so it I don't have to think about it. I just rotate it and move it and I keep moving down my card and then I'm done, right? When I remove that stencil for the final time, it looks really stark, stark white at the bottom. So I did add just a touch of blue ink there as well. But again, because of that mask, it's not gonna change the color of my grass at all. As an added detail, I wanted to put the fluting on there. The fluting is a separate die, so this isn't gonna cut out an oval. You could just create the fluting on a rectangle if you wanted. I'm gonna tape that down, and then when I pull it out, it's gonna have that really beautiful detail. Off camera, I attempted to add some text background straight onto my card <laughs> that I had already completed, and when I went to stamp it the second time to make it darker, it wasn't lined up right. So I have a double stamped image. So I stamped it onto another piece of cardstock. And then I just used a pencil to very carefully mark on the edges how long it needed to be on each side. When I stuck it in my trimmer, I cut it ever so slightly bigger than that to make sure that none of the original piece 
would be hanging out from behind it. I didn't want that. And then that finishes that up beautifully. I'm going to go ahead and add a Winifred, my little zebra, onto my oval. Lots of wet glue here. Um, I did have a second white oval cut, and so I backed this oval with the other one. Unnecessary. <laughs> like, uh, it just, I didn't want it hanging around not being used, so I went for it. And then I'm going to go ahead and center this on my card and use my fingers to remind me of how far down I can go with my glue. Um, and it's just going to be kind of at an angle on the back. And that gives me a little bit of wiggle room. I don't go all the way down to where my fingers are marking. I get close, but I want to be able to move this around without smearing glue onto the inside of my card. This is the mirrored arch labels and I am in love. I think I used these in the last stepped up video as well. So I cut one out of black cardstock and then I have a slightly smaller one that I'm bringing into the January 1st kit. And I have all these happy birthdays. Some of these sentiments are a little bit on the smaller side. That's just the circle sentiments, but without the circle. Uh, the word birthday is very difficult to fit and <laughs> in a circle, my friends. It's very long. And so it works beautifully for this because it's sort of chopping off the top and bottom of the circle. But certainly you could do one of the rectangle sentiments or a stamp sentiment or whatever you want here. But I really wanted to show you a five by seven card and another way to stretch those emergency sentiments. So that will finish up card number three. I would love to know which of these three cards is your favorite and if you ever make five by seven cards. If you're interested in the free printable, all I ask is that you subscribe to my channel. If you click that subscribe button and ring the bell, you'll be notified of future kits. You'll find all the instructions in the description box below the video. Thank you so much for spending your time with me and I will see you next time.